Welcome back, folks, to the Knife Show Podcast. I'm TC, along with... Oh, yeah, that's me, Isaac. <laughs> Sorry, I was uh, trying to get our uh, uh, video play in here that, you know, we, we just left off on our part one of uh, the social media hate knives, right. and we were, we're trying to gather and remember what exactly we left off on, yeah. and we were talking about uh, how social media thinks knives are weapons. weapons. Yeah, and so really uh, what, it, what it comes down to is wh how do we get around this? What, what do we do to get around this? And it forces us on our end of things to be really creative and to, I guess, think outside the box uh, when it comes to the content that we produce. And really, I mean, we don't have the same avenues, and that's what we talked about last time. So what does that mean, thinking outside the box? And I, I wrote down a bunch of notes. Um, creativity is is huge, and, and creating new content that is engaging and stuff that you guys want to see and stuff that holds people's attention. Um, and I guess the next part of that is, um, and also our partnerships with all the brands that we represent. Uh, that's a huge key because these brands are the brands that you guys are searching for. So working with those brands and creating engaging content and there's a lot of pieces to this huge puzzle that is social media. I mean, we've got photos, we've got short form content, um, close up informational and spec driven stuff and the skits that we do. We've also got long form content and discussion like we're doing now. Um, and then we can look at also one thing that we're trying to do now is our podcast, which uh, I guess is a different facet to the industry and giving kind of a behind the scenes of what we go through on a day-to-day -day basis and, and the things that we see. Because I'll be honest, one thing that I see a lot in our comments and especially in the complaints is, and we don't want to come out and just say, oh, well, you're stupid, you don't understand. We want to be uh, more informative about what uh, really goes on in the day-to-day -day business. That way, you guys can be more informed as a consumer and understand that it's not as simple as it might seem on the outside. Because a lot of this, a lot of the stuff that we hear is, well, why don't you just do this? Well, we would love to just do this. If it was that simple, we would have already done it. But there's a lot more that goes into it than just one simple click of a mouse or flip of a switch so there's there's a lot that goes into that and i mean really when it comes down to it uh, a lot of our jobs and uh, especially isaac's comes down to analytics um, and i want you to touch on analytics and and what that means for the content that we produce and and what we see on a daily basis because that's a huge part of it and that's one thing that i don't think a lot of people understand yeah, so uh, we touched on it maybe a little bit in the in the first, but uh, we, we talked about shadow banning a little bit and how that works and uh, what it means. Uh, shadow banning, in a nutshell, is I post something on Instagram, and the only way you can see that post is if you go to our profile and look at it. Uh, it's not going to show up in your Explorer feed. It's not going to show up in really just your follow feed. Uh, Facebook and Instagram has really became a, a huge pay to play. And when you're not allowed to pay to play, it's just not fair. Uh, a prime example in numbers that, that shows this is we'll, we'll make a post and, uh, let's say we had a video that gets 20,000 views. When I go and look at that 20,000 views, I want to know who those 20,000 views are. Where did they come from? Well, out of those 20,000 views, uh, roughly, you know, 19,600 of them are people who followed our channel and, you know, 400 or so are people who have, uh, you know, not following our channel. And, and that's a really obscured number. When you look at YouTube, um, YouTube gives you the exact opposite of something like that. That's why we post our videos direct to YouTube now and just give you a link to watch it because um, 
they're just not playing fair. I when when we put the video on Instagram or Facebook, it it gets like two hundred views. Yeah. Versus you put it on YouTube, it'll get twenty to thirty thousand views sometimes. Yeah. So, uh, and and when you look at that, and it it's really um, a double edged sword, as you will, <laughs> not uh, pun intended. On on the fact that. Um, on YouTube, it gets frustrating because we have a video that gets 20,000 views. Oddly, only like 3,000 of those are our subscribers and 17,000 are people who are not subscribed to our channel. So you tell me, you know, right. tell me there's not something funky going on on some of these platforms. Right. And also the, the landscape is ever changing because when we first started on this three years ago, it was vastly different because then actually at... At one point, our most, I guess, uh, successful stuff was a lot of times on either Facebook or Instagram. Yeah, Instagram was our biggest. Instagram was huge, especially. Yeah. For we almost gave up on YouTube. Time. Yeah, we we almost just was like, okay, we're just gonna stop with YouTube. We're gonna keep posting stuff, but it's it's not gonna be our uh, priority. Our priority, and now that is completely flipped over. And YouTube has become our main priority. And then our, our secondary content comes up on Facebook and Instagram. And, I mean, we still pl pay attention to those platforms because, I mean, at any given moment, that could change. And that's kind of what's frustrating. And in the eyes of, you know, people like us and, and Ben Peterson is exciting sometimes because it, it forces us to... It challenges us. Well, it, you know, one the only thing I disagree with Ben on is he says is it forces you to be more creative. Yeah, but it's not that our you know, there's people out here doing knife content that is very creative, and it still doesn't matter. Yeah, it it's it, it forces you to basically try to find ways to cheat the system. Uh, for example, with one of the videos that was playing behind me earlier, with the uh, we're not forking around. Yeah, forkingstuff.com. Uh, yeah, so. It was, it's uh, if if you look around, there's uh, I remember what started it was uh, Normandy knives. They use we don't sell spoons, yep. and um, which was very clever of them. And originally, I was just thinking of find, making us a, a new landing page. And uh, Tyler messaged me and said, "Is this what you're talking about?" And I was like, "Yeah, not really, <laughs> sort of, but I like it. Let's do it." Uh, so we've done a soft launch on that, and if, we said it in part one. I think we, I've even played a clip of the video. Um, you can you can expect to see that here in the f future. I've not rushed right into it. I wanted it to sit there for a minute. Um, oddly, what's crazy is I've not really put it out anywhere other than in just like talking about it in our podcasts and videos, right. and it, it averages like 200 clicks a day Yeah, already. So. Um, I wanted to make sure that it was going to be okay. And so going forward, you will see a slow rollout of that. Maybe some ads going through at ForkingStuff.com. That is us. Yep. Now, I'll tell you what is not us. <laughs> yes. And there have been a plethora of companies on TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook, using some of our videos and my voice to promote their own knockoff site. And that is a scam. If you buy from them, you are losing your money. So we do not have any way to sell merchandise on social media platforms. We do not sell through social media platforms. We don't have a TikTok shop. We don't sell on social media platforms. So any of those asking for money on those platforms is a scam, even if they're using our videos. And We've actually had people call in to our call center downstairs and email us um, really angry and uh, berating us saying, I demand that you get these videos taken down. We're trying. We're doing the best we can. But we can, I mean, all we can do is report them. We can't actually say this video gets taken down. We and can't just go on the internet it's, and just it's pull pe it. It's people from other countries doing this, yes. too. It's uh, not us, and that's why they're using our videos and our voices. They're, and they're making these websites to buy these uh, counterfeit knives. Some of them are, you, you will get a knife. It's not a real. It's not the real thing. You're getting a no. counterfeit knife. But they're, they're making these temporary pop-up websites uh, with crazy domains just yeah. to 
to get you to buy it real quick. And then you might go back and check to see your order status like a week later and realize that that site's been took, taken down. Yeah. And uh, like, like for example, I, I keep seeing the same video. The, the biggest one that keeps popping up with you is we do our uh, daily grinds and it was the Kershaw launch 11. Launch 11. Yeah. And uh, it starts off with you showing the, that. And then all of a sudden it goes to a hand view. First of all, you're, you're never going to see a video of us talking about a knife uh, in a daily grind that immediately cuts to a different scene. Yeah. Uh, especially in a completely different human being's hand. Yeah. And the quality of that video too is like, it's so it's pixelated. Awful. Like you're, you're, you're going to know the difference in quality right away. Yeah. Um, and it's because they're ripping it off the web and yeah. it's, it's just not, it's not I've the had, same thing. I've had actually several of my personal friends like around here message me and call me and are like, um, are you working for a different company now? No, I am not. And that is not us. So if you see that stuff, report it and say that it's a scam. Just make sure it is well, not us first. Yeah. <laughs> Don't report us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, uh, if it has SMKW in the name, SMKW, uh, and all that, then you, you will see that that is us. Uh, it's going to have our logo. It's going to have our name. It's going to be very obvious that it's us. Just if it's not, report it. It will get taken down eventually. But also, all of these tech companies, they operate on AI now. So there's not an actual human being going through and saying, oh, I got this report. I'm going to go check this out, and I'm going to get this one taken down. No, it's all done by computer. So all we can do is report it, and if enough of us report it, and get them all taken down, then maybe they'll stop eventually. But suffice it to say that hmm, that's not us. Um, and so, yeah, uh, copycats are out there. It's a real thing. It's scary. Keep an eye out on it. Um, moving forward from that, uh, I know you got some notes there, but another thing I wanted to touch on was just a funny thing that's happened to us recently with TikTok. And I was trying to remember which knives it actually was on our yeah. daily grinds that got. We had three... Um, we had three daily grinds get removed for banned content. And it, it's hilarious at this point because we posted, it's called the daily grind. There's yeah. one every single day of the week. There's 356 a year. So, yeah. uh, depending on the leap year. Um, <laughs> so we had, we had three took down and gosh, I believe it was, one was a traditional folder, which was hilarious. Right. Uh, one was a fixed blade. Yeah. Because we, and we don't know for sure, but we think that one of the words was strike. And, I mean, they view us as weapons, and then we say strike in the video, and that automatically signals that AI to say, hey, this is banned content right here. What I, I was I talking believe about. it was a zero tolerance right here was, was one of them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it uh, was. But, but, it, but it's just simple... Just simple videos, and it, it's weird. It, we we we've come to this, like you just said. We think it might be the words that we're saying in it because yeah, it is AI that's tracking what we're saying. Just like with our YouTube, if you click the closed captioning, we do not write that because we don't have the time to. Right. And uh, it's it's generating what we're saying right now. So if I'm trying to say blah 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 blah, blah it's going to do its best to try to figure out what the <laughs> heck I just said. Sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong. And that's the same thing when it's going for these uh, strike violations. They don't have the, it's not smart enough yet to realize I'm not talking about striking somebody. The name is called strike. Yeah. So uh, it, it doesn't know that. But we were able to appeal it and uh, get it put back up. It right. is, I, I know a lot of other knife companies, they had some success right away with TikTok, but then they had similar things happen. And it seems like they kind of given up on it. I, I believe the biggest one that was really hurt by it was Everyday Minimalist. Yeah. He had like almost a million uh, followers on TikTok and they, they removed his whole account. Mm -hmm. So it's... It's a rough world out there, especially for people like that. We're, we have the benefit of being uh, under the umbrella of a company where we're going to do this no matter what, if it doesn't go on TikTok. But when you're an independent um, person, uh, influencer talking that's about these livelihood. brands, that's your livelihood. So it, it is a little rough and not fair. So. Yeah, exactly right. And it's, it, you know, it's a pain. But as we, and 
I guess, uh, getting back on track with analytics, you know, we have to really delve into analytics very deeply and, and very hard because we can't, again, like we said in the first video, we can't throw money at it for advertising. We can't force our stuff to be put in front of people's faces because they won't let us pay to play. So we have to look at our analytics and say, okay, here's what's getting views. Here's what's not. Here's what's getting likes. Here's what's not. Here's what is increasing our subscriber rate. Giveaways not included. Here's what's not. And even deeper than that, we even look at the age range and the gender and the geographical location of who's watching our content so that we can further tailor our content to benefit those people. Because, I mean, if that's, if that's what's getting our views, then that's how we expand. And also expanding into areas that, you know, we're not getting views in. Yeah. So. We have some trolls in there that uh, some people will be like, I like the way it used to be before we came. And, um, you know, cool. Thank you. Uh, you know, thank you for the insult. <laughs> uh, but just just for the facts of the matter is prior to us getting here, uh, they ran social media for a little over 10 years. And within 10 years, they got they had a little under 8000 subscribers on YouTube. And then we've only had control of this department for right at around a year. Well, we've not had control. Well, we've only had control for about a year and a half. If yeah. you really add it up. Um, and we've gone from, you know, eight to 54,000 on just YouTube. And we went from 40 on Instagram to, uh, close to 90, mm -hmm. uh, on Facebook, we went from 60 to, uh, 120. Yep. So it's, uh, we're we're not the biggest channel out there by no means, but we have seen seen growth. So it's if you don't like it, I'm I'm sorry. We we try to tailor something to everybody. We realize anybody who's watched something before, uh, they're going to be upset when that goes away. Yeah. But if it's not making money, we can't continue to do it because that's why we're here to help the store make money and give entertaining content that's going to grow the channel. Yeah. Um, Man, and to that point, like we we read all the comments, we listen to everything. And that's another thing that we're going to be doing soon is TC reads mean comments. That's going to be fun. <laughs> I'm really excited to do that, but we read all the comments and we actually do take your suggestions and your critiques into account. And we try to, uh, keep that in mind as we go forward and as we create more content and there's been several instances where that has affected the content that we've made but we have to keep doing what works for the channel too yeah uh, absolutely and it, it, it's sad a little bit we we did have some uh uh, you know, old some of the older group uh 55 to 65 drop a little bit yep um I get it. We're younger. You probably think we're stupid and you don't want anything to do with us. And no matter what we say, even if we're just reading the descriptions of a knife off, it's probably wrong in your mind. Uh, we get it. We understand. We're sorry. But here's the thing. Knives and collecting of knives are not going to carry on unless you invest in a younger generation. Yeah. And that is what's happening right now. It's it's sad we, we have these case days and you look back at pictures of case days and how many people used to come to these things and now it's just dwindled down because the generation of, of people who are collecting traditional folders is 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 slowing down tremendous menacely. Yeah. And it, it's because the, the age group of, you know, eighteen to, to forty doesn't really care about them anymore. And if you don't care about them, what else, where are you going to get interested in? Mm -hmm. So you have to find something to keep the community of all ages in it. So we do our very best to do a good mix of everything, I yeah. think. I, you know, I, there's not a week that you don't see at least a traditional folder on our channel. Oh, absolutely. And that's that's not going to change because I'm I'm very adamant of keeping traditional folders. I'm kind of a old soul. Um, I carry my Pawpaw's knife almost every day. I've got it with me right now, and that's the knife that I use more than 
just about any other. You've got your uh, 1970s queen. Yeah, I think I got it on the today. table table over there. Yeah, and, and I think us talking about it and seeing, uh, you know, more people our age seeing that we carry them. I'm hoping we influence them as well. Yeah. So uh, we don't we don't need your trash talk. We we need you to to get more people involved in it. You yeah. know, you need to be more encouraging to and you know if if you're an older person. Uh, and uh, this doesn't pertain to you. I'm not talking to you. you. Right. You. I think the people know who I'm talking to. So, it's it's a small group of people, and uh, the whole thing. Everybody thinks the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Well, in this case, we're we're not going to give you the grease. We're no nope. because you're not the one buying the product. And it, it seems like the people who complain the most are the ones who buy the least. Yeah. So in a lot of cases, in a lot of, in a lot of cases. Yeah. And, and, and that's what, that's what hurts our channel too, is people not getting along. It's like one thing people don't realize is like, if we put a, a video out of a case and you just hate case and you hit that dislike button immediately, but immediately, well, you heard our channel case is never going to realize that you disliked their video. No. And there's no reason to hate on our channel because you don't like a case knife or uh, any other brand for, for that matter. Uh, it, it's, it's just odd. But it, it, well, and okay, here's, here's, another, <laughs> here's another metric. And this is, this is where it gets funny because I remember specifically we did a video and we featured traditional patterns earlier this year. And one of the people commented on it, and I don't remember the exact comment, but it was basically... Nobody buys traditional knives anymore. That's ridiculous. I don't believe anything you're saying. Well, I've got numbers to prove that Case has been our best-selling brand for the last several oh, years. Oh, by, by long And, shot, I mean, yeah. I know for a fact in 2021 it was over $6 million. Um, so, I mean, take that for what you will, but I'm the one sitting here with the information right here. Um I mean, if you disagree with that, that's fine. You disagree with it, but you're not the one looking at the numbers. Um, so it, it is what it is. And there are still people that, that buy and love those knives. I am one of those people. Now, I will say that I don't use a lot of my case knives that I buy. The ones that I get are mostly to collect. I, I treat them like coins. I The way I like to look at it is if you don't screw up the knife and you can't keep it in pristine condition, if you're doing the collector thing, it's no different than coins. Yeah. You Whatever you, if you pay $55 for a case knife and you put it up on your shelf, you keep the box, you keep the wrapper, you keep, keep, you know, keep it in good condition, that knife's never going to be less than $55. Right. Uh, and it's only going to go up. I mean, uh, we were talking about the Tony Bowes knives that we bought uh, two years ago. Yep. Uh, right before he, case, he passed away. R.I.P. Love you, Tony. Anyways, um, we were looking up the values of that, and what they only made one of 100 on each one that yep. we bought. They had uh, The first one that we got was a Sal Bailey Stockman. That was in 2020. And then in 2021 was the Saddlehorn. Yeah, and... We paid, I think, I think those came in right at a hundred dollars retail MSRP. Yeah, something like that. Uh, and uh, just one of similar instance from 2011 at a similar event that we had here. Uh, I was looking it up on eBay, and it's going for two fifty, three hundred dollars, or no, or it's sold for two fifty, three hundred dollars. So uh, that's that's just in a nine year, you know, ten year time yeah. that you've you've tripled the value of what your investment was so you know imagine over time you know um tyler you've seen him on our not tyler ceo here but our friend tyler that comes yeah. on a lot of the trips with us his dad well he he i just send him messages all the time like this is popular do you want it and he's like yes and he has a whole entire safe full of these case knives that he just keeps in the box and he's like this is my kid's inheritance one right. day and uh one thing i was i started doing now and I've, I've advised him as well is you need to inventory if you collect knives and no one else in your family gives a damn about knives you need to make an inventory list about your knives yep i mean just like you would do with firearms i mean especially if you have homeowner's insurance i mean god forbid there's a fire or something that takes all of that stuff away 
you need to have an inventory on hand of all of that stuff and its value. Uh, that way, I mean, serial numbers, whatever. At whatever least what you paid for it. Yeah. So, um, but that we're getting into a little bit of another realm here. Uh, but just just being passionate about these knives is something that the ag- algorithm doesn't understand. They just do not see this as a collectible uh, tool. It it just literally sees them as a weapon. Yep. And uh, as a community, we have to be so much more supportive. Just because you don't like a knife, please just do not hit that dislike button. You don't understand how much YouTube pays attention to dislike, and it'll push it away. We're not we're not Justin Bieber famous here, and ha- who has you know I think his song <laughs> uh, "Baby" or I think that's the name of it. It uh, you know, baby, baby, yeah. Uh, it's the most disliked video on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> but. Um, it also has some of the most views on YouTube, but we're also not Justin Bieber. So uh, it's it's one of those things. we got to support each other. Uh, you know, I can't speak for the other ones, but we do our best to support other knife retailers in, in itself, too. Uh, we Their channels, we'll, we'll give them a like. We'll, we'll do anything like that because we know their success means we'll, we will have success. So if you are a competitor and you're disliking our stuff, shame on you because we support you. Yep. <laughs> and... We support. We try to support as many people as we can. Look at the wall behind me. We have stickers from just about I think every yeah. channel on YouTube that talks about knives. Yeah, it's 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 insane. And I mean, those guys have been good to us. We we support them as as much as we possibly can because that's what it's all about. I mean, we're all in this together. And honestly, I mean, when it comes down to a, I guess you would say a social issue, since we're talking about social media. That's what I think is the biggest problem facing us in today's society is we are so divided and we are so quick to argue and be at each other's throats that uh, knives is what we all find in common. And that's that's something that I think should bring us all together, Uh, whether or not we appreciate the same knives. uh, That's why they make chocolate and vanilla. Uh, Not everybody likes the same thing. And. I think this is an outlet that for us has been wonderful because it allows us to bring our passion to a lot bigger audience. And this is truly something that we are passionate about and that we love and enjoy. And we want this to carry over into other parts of society. So if we can show everybody that this brings us together, then... I think they might have a different outlook on it. They might not see it as such an evil object or something like that. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It's uh, it's a crazy world. I think there is a little bit of hope. Uh, the fact that my appeal with TikTok was successful was yep. a big sigh of relief. Yeah. And hopefully going forward, we're like now marked on a list like hey we've checked their stuff before this is fine they've literally posted over 300 videos like this and <laughs> now we have a problem with it yeah so yeah um do you have anything else on your note no that's yeah. that's pretty much it for for this episode and i mean not everything is going to be this deep and this you know uh i guess passionate or some of it will be a little more shallow and a little more fun time having and we'll have some lives too yeah we'll do exactly we'll do We're live. Be doing some live podcasts i would like to do a live blade still doesn't matter that way we can answer <laughs> and do a q a kind of thing with all of you out there so that you understand what we're talking about and um maybe not be so quick to judge a thumbnail <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh just a little news recap uh you know Keep an eye out on our new Queen line. We brought it back to uh, yep. USA Made. We have uh, a fall, we call it the Fall Festival. Yep. Uh, do you have the dates on that? That one's coming up October 27th, 28th, and 29th, I believe it is. 27th, 29th, 29th. And then we're also, me and TC. The last here, weekend in October. We'll be heading to Blade, Blade Show West. West here soon. Mm-hmm. And you just picked up what, I don't know if this will air before this comes out. So, not. Uh, so these are probably sold out whenever you see this, but we will be getting more in. This is our X-Wing exclusive uh, with the Hellhound Blade. Really like that thing. That thing is sick. Absolutely Uh, sick. That blade was meant for that. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. All right, so that's that's it for me. Absolutely. Well, folks, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. We appreciate you more than you know. 
And that's what we want to try to get across. And really, this podcast is mainly for our interaction with you and us getting a chance to just talk to you and be candid with you. Um, that's what we're doing this for. So hope you guys have enjoyed this and continue to enjoy the Knife Show podcast. I'm TC. It's been me and Isaac here. And remember, if it cuts, we... What? I can't hear you. Carry it. That was creepy. Right, carry it. That was really <laughs> creepy. <laughs>